Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, Adam. Yeah. Well. This test I closed. Good. Okay, now it's saying there. So this one switched to live. Yep. It's not saying live. So it's saying. And I have. I have
the uh, painting prints. Um, yeah, this isn't going to work. <laughs> You'll get to watch the whole presentation before we actually talk about any of it. <laughs> it's like a sneak peek. <laughs> yeah, it's like advancing slides with, for no good reason. All right. Let's see what happens. Think you got it fixed? No, but we're going to roll with it. Nope. All right. Um, so these are a couple of months ago. I started. I said, "Well, you know, I want to. We want to start taking our kids um, further through the finishing process, right? Like they all print, 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 and we don't print. We print for speed, not for quality, mostly. Mostly. Um, so we print pretty quickly, but we still want the kids to sort of explore some of these post-processing um, finishing techniques." So I thought the easiest way to start would be paint, right? That's something that they all have access to, they all have um, experience with, or hopefully um, at least some craft paint and some markers. Um, so I tried out a bunch of different easy to get your hands on sort of paints. Um, and then rated them based on a couple of different factors. So I looked into ease of use, how easy is it to actually use and manipulate it, thinking about a wide range of use, because that's sort of what we do. Um, and then I also thought about coverage. So once I painted it on or once I covered it, how well did it cover? And then accessibility and cost. So while some of these options might be easy to find, they're not necessarily classroom. You're not going to go spend hundreds of dollars on paint to maybe have a couple of kids sometimes finish their, <laughs> paint their 3D prints. Um, and then the other one was just kid friendliness. So would it be appropriate for sort of youth, again, sort of thinking about that whole range. So I tried to keep in mind, like, what would elementary school kids use and be good with? And, and sort of what would high school, you know, I think of high schoolers as sort of adults, so they can handle a lot more than the kindergarten, first grade, second graders. Is it something with the yeah. hangout? Oh, I see what it is. Got it? Got it. All right. So the first one I did is not technically paint, but just regular old Sharpie marks. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. very animated. And I don't think it's I actually even have, it. have any in my box here. Um, but just Sharpie markers, I figured these are something that most educators have around in their classrooms or after school spaces. They're pretty inexpensive. They're markers, so the kids, it's easy for them to use. It's what we recommend when we have our kids come in for 3D printing um, field trips. We sort of print everything in white or clear or something very close to that and then, hey, take your keychains home and custom color them the way you want. Otherwise, they're going to be all pink or all blue or all green or all purple. Um, and so Sharpies are really easy to use. They're really accessible. Um, the coverage was pretty good. The only dip thing that, um, and we'll pass these around after afterwards. The thing with the Sharpie is that it bled a little bit. So like on the plastic, it actually seeped in um, to some unintended areas. Um, Overall, pretty good coverage, pretty easy to use, not not too shabby. Um, in a pinch, it will work fantastically. And just the the scores are one is a low, five is a high. Thank you. Um, the next thing, leveling up from that, I tried, um, and everything that I use for this process, I got it like Michael's, just at the craft store. The next thing I tried were these um, Sharpie oil-based markers or oil-based markers. Um, and these are two fine point ones. So they have a point that's very similar to the regular Sharpie marker, but they actually paint inside. Um, and these rated a little bit differently. Um, easy to use. The coverage was actually better than the Sharpies um, because it is a paint that you're using. But um, on accessibility and cost, they are much more expensive than a regular Sharpie and um, not as necessarily easy to find. Like I found them sort of 
on the end cap at Michael's, but they're not there now <laughs> when I went back to get some more. Um, and the kid friendliness would be a lower rating at a two because they have a nasty odor, they're oil-based paint, so they're messier. Um, any of those factors, like for high school kids, they'd probably be fine and okay. Um, and I would recommend near a window or in a well-ventilated area. Um, so that's the oil-based paint markers. They, also they do dry really fast. Yeah. Do, did they, were they? Where were the dry out very fast like, yeah sharper like the results the are sharper yeah. um and the result can i pull this off yeah i didn't know if you were using this or anything um the results are sharper um and a bit more um glossy like the actually that is the marker i think no this is the marker and it actually stayed put it didn't bleed it didn't um and I don't know with the Sharpie if it will rub off over time. My guess is probably yes. Um, you know, if you, yeah, it'll actually come off on your thumb if you sort of press it. Um, with, the, with the marker or with the paint, it won't do that. Um, it's pretty on there. Your permanent marker comes off? Yeah. Yep. So for keychains? So for keychains, not ideal. Um, I'd go with something. I, my personal preference, and I'll share that at the end, would be to go with something a little bit more, a paint. <laughs> the markers are great and fine, um, but not necessarily always practical. So the next thing, and this one was my favorite, um, was just regular craft paint um, for all kinds of reasons. It's super inexpensive. You can get it just about anywhere. It's really easy to use. It's not that messy. It washes out of clothes. It washes out of, it'll wash off of surfaces. Um, the coverage is really, really good. Um, it actually is sort of, I think the coverage is really great. Um, and the kid friendliness is great for all of those aforementioned reasons of cleanup and um, The other thing is like you can get this stuff on sale for like five for two dollars or something ridiculously inexpensive like that. What's it made of? It's just acrylic, yeah. Water-based though, so it's it's, fast drying, it, it didn't take too long to dry. With a thin paintbrush, you can get into little nooks and crannies. You can use something, if you're painting something large, use a bigger paintbrush and, or foam brush even, um, and get in there and, and really. And then I thought, well, I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna get all of this craft paint, but then they also had glossy craft paint. I thought, well, that sounds cool. <laughs> um, the glossy craft paint is not good for 3D prints. Um, the the other caveat is that I didn't do any priming or sanding anything. I took the prints off the printer, put them in a pile, and just pulled them one at a time and painted them. Um, because I consider filing and sanding and priming to be a so whole separate um, finishing take. I really wanted to sort of get in, get like, things that kids could do in five or ten minutes while they're waiting for the next activity or, you know, to really just take something to the next level quickly and easily, because I don't know about your students or the kids that you work with, but our students have short attention spans, and so it needs to be fast and easy for them to do. Um, oops, sorry. Um, the glossy craft paint, and you'll see it on the sample when I pass it around, did not have good coverage. It actually has two coats of paint on it, um, and it just sort of didn't stick. Um, you can sort of see it in the photo there. It looks sort of distressed. Um, it just, the coverage was really, really poor. So while it is just as easy to find as the regular craft paint and just a little bit more expensive, a couple of cents more expensive, um, and kid friendly and everything, it doesn't have any odors or anything like that, just as easy to clean up. Um, the coverage sort of stunk for me. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, liquid text. Oh, in the interest of being thorough, can I put this here? Yep. The next thing that I got, and they didn't have small of this um, without buying a whole set, so I just got these. They were on sale. So this is just Liquitex acrylic paint. This will be more in your art section rather than the craft section. They're all kept in different places. Um, and this is really just a like a it's like a medium body sort of acrylic, you know, great for painting canvases and things like that. Um, it actually worked fairly well. Um, again, sort of easy to use, not as easy to use as the craft paint necessarily because of the consistency is a bit thicker. 
Um, but the coverage is really great. The cost is a bit more prohibitive, um, but you can, again, these big tubes, you can get them on sale for like two or three bucks a piece um, if you watch for that. Um, and the kid friendliness, I put it a four because I did feel like with the, um, with the texture being a little bit different, they, it might glob on a bit differently, like craft paint's really smooth and more liquidy, um, that that might be easier for them to work with. Um, and then I really splurged and bought some really fancy uh, golden heavy body, uh, just little tiny tubes, which I didn't even know they sold, sold tiny tubes, but I got like a five, six pack or something like that. This is expensive stuff. You are not probably going to want to use this with your kids um, because you go quickly and it's expensive. Um, so the cost um, and accessibility, you might have trouble finding it in your craft store. Usually you have to order it online. Um, especially if you're looking for certain colors beyond the sort of general primary colors. Um, so the accessibility is really low at a two. Um, the coverage was fantastic though. <laughs> it works really great. Um, so save this for your personal projects um, at home if you want to splurge on your prints and your finishing. Again, easy to use, but um, a little bit lower than the craft paint just because the consistency is really heavy and thick. Um, so it's sort of like butter. Um, versus um, uh, syrup. <laughs> <laughs> are all these pieces PLA? Yes. yes. Yeah, they are all PLA. And it would be interesting to see like what would happen. I, I don't even know if we have any ABS printers around anymore, but what, what that factor and how that factor changed that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to try was hobby enamel. So this is used for painting like your model cars and things like that. Um, for the little bit of paint that you get, and Really, you only need a little bit to paint what I painted. Um, but it was really expensive. Um, it is also, it comes with a flammable warning. It has a, a toxic odor. <laughs> um, and the coverage was really poor. Um, it was along the same lines as the glossy craft paint. Um, just didn't stick, really not. Um, I think I had two coats on that one, too. Um, just really didn't give me the, the sort of vibrant color that I wanted. It looks just a little bit, well, the color is green too, so it looks a little, just a little slimy. <laughs> um, ease of use, again, is a four because it, it is easy to use, um, but not necessarily recommended for youth-based, uh, not kid-friendly. It has solvent in it. Yeah. So it's, it works really well on ABS. Oh. Really well. There you but, go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, randomly, on my way out of Michael's, I passed through the marker aisle um, and found this Crayolable, or Cray, <laughs> Crayolable, Crayola washable kids paint. Um, and it really is just like a little jar of washable paint. Looks sort of like a craft paint. Um, it was in the like marker aisle. Um, the consistency is a little bit different than the craft paint. Um, but it worked really, really well. It was inexpensive. You could have gotten it in a in a whole pack um, for just a couple of dollars. You know, Crayola makes pretty decent stuff for kids. Um, so the kid friendliness is really high. The accessibility and cost is really high. Um, the coverage was okay. Um, it was better than I thought it would be, um, and better than I expected it to be for just being sort of this impulse buy on the way out of the store. Um, and the use was just as good as. Um, as the craft paint, um, close anyway. Um, I'd be interested to see one thing that I didn't try was like a tempera paint, so something that like a lot of elementary schools would have on hand in their art rooms, uh, just to see how that would turn out. I think it would get flaky too. Yeah, on the especially on the plastic. Yeah. Um, so which one was your pick? So my pick um, is the craft paint. The regular craft paint, just acrylic craft paint. Um, because it's inexpensive, it's really easy to use. You can get it in any color you want it in under the sun. Um, and it doesn't matter if it goes quickly, you know, you, because it's cheap enough to buy more. Uh, and the coverage was really, really good. So, you know, that's, um, yeah, that's my pick. That's my recommendation. Craft paint for kids finishing their prints. <laughs> Not glossy. <clears throat> <laughs> 
What was that? Two. I just proceed away. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the tax write off. Fifty cents. Fifty oh. cents. Yeah. Super cheap. I think I got it on sale. No, I don't have a teacher discount anymore. I don't have a teaching. I don't have an ID. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think 21% off is what it was. Um, so I saved $4.25 on four, four tubes. But, like, it's on sale all the time, you know? <laughs> it's like Kohl's. It's like Kohl's. I didn't try mixing them. You mean to, like, color? No, I didn't try mixing them. But that would be... That would be a good next move for future. Yeah. And so Steph has the samples, but we also have the paint here. And if you brought something um, or I have extra octopi that haven't been colored, um, you're welcome to do your experiments uh, after we shoot through the presentation. So. All right. <clears throat> oh, thanks. It's also all of my the whole write up is on the blog today. Um, yes, I published that this morning, just in the nick of time. <laughs> um, so something I wanted to bring tonight, um, I've been playing around with with polishing prints. Um, yes, if you don't mind. Uh, with a just a jewelry tumbler, a rotary tumbler um, that I got from Amazon. Um, so it's about. Um, I will tell you the. make sure you store everything together. Um, I lost the lid to my original tumbler uh, container, and it's hard to get, like, separate parts. Um, so it's about 90 bucks for just this little container, um, which is good for most decent-sized prints. Um, if you've seen, like, some of our talks before, we have the little uh, 3D-printed bust of me and Stephanie. Um, I tumble those in here. Uh, this time I did some tiki's. Um, and then you need the stainless steel uh, pins, uh, which are really just what they sound like. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, so the pins, um, it's like lead from yeah. Pencil, uh, yeah, they're just like little stainless steel pins uh, that kind of grind down um, your objects. Um, so, yeah, let me show you these two. So when I printed these two objects, um, the reason this one's all hairy on the side Yeah, they're not really maybe on the black. Oh, I just lost. Let's see if it looks like better on black. There we go. Oh yeah, that's much better. Um, so I I knew that I needed a, a control and a uh, uh, a variable when I when I did these so I did them side by side on the printer so the little hairs down the side are actually they were also on this side as well and it's from the the head of the printer not uh, retracting all the way when it moves to the next uh, object um, and so I actually left the hairs on when I put this one in the tumbler um, and you can see it completely removed all of them um, and there's no real remnants of them on there you can also see the, the change in color um, in the finish. So this is a, a copper filament or a copper-based filament. Um, and it's, it's very porous um, when, it, when it comes out. Um, but once it's gone through the tumbler, this is uh, 12 hours of tumbling. Um, it really absorbs a lot of the moisture. It kind of gets this sheen to it. The, the pantene gets onto it. Pantene? I think that's what it is. Uh, Patina? Patina, yeah, there you go. 
Um, and so to use the tumbler, you put in uh, about half the container of pins, and then you add some water and then some blue uh, dish detergent. Just drop your print in um, and let it go. Um, I've really liked this tumbler. Um, it, it served me well for the last three or four months. Um, and then today I was trying to do some last minute tumbling of some other metal prints um, and it stopped turning. So I'm going to take it apart and see if I can get it working again. But um, So this is a, a copper filament is a bronze filament. It's just really interesting to me how the the, the polishing uh, affects kind of the surface. Um, you wouldn't really think that they're the, the same materials. Um, the other materials I want to polish but did not get a chance to were some of these. Um, well, this is a carbon fiber um, based filament. And then I have some other uh, Chinese, or not Chinese, but uh, some lower quality metal filaments that I printed uh, that I got filaments. from, yeah, that I got from Micro Center. And if you compare their copper and their bronze to ColorFab's copper and bronze, there's a noticeable density difference. Um, well, there's a no noticeable color difference as well. Now, these haven't been, you didn't tumble any. No. Right? Um, this is the. Let me see the. Um, you have the yep. copper. Oh, yeah, that's the bronze. This is the bronze. This is the copper. Okay. So this is They're the same. Yeah, they're bronze uh, compared to the other two. And there's also, I mean, this is more plastic than it is metal powder, whereas these, they were printed with the exact same settings, and you can feel the difference in the weight. And then where's the copper? Yeah, so that's their copper. And this, I mean, it, it does have a, a nice copper color to it. Um, but I don't really think it has as much metal powder, um, even though the box says the that it has. The ratios almost seem to be swapped between yeah. the two different filaments. Um, and then also have a... The first one is from a company called ColorFab. Um, I got it from Matter Hackers, um, but there, there's lots of people online who sell it. I haven't seen it at Micro Center, though, yet. No, not yet. This, this stuff is... And then they have a brass, too, that came from Micro Center, which... Yeah. Not impressive. Not impressive. <laughs> Did you try tumbling with pennies? No, I have not. Or is that is that a thing? Uh, or I guess you can get uh, high copper nails. Okay. Yeah, there's oh, yeah. there's a couple different like tumbling materials. There's also uh, I think walnut shells are a tumbling material. Now, the the video I had originally seen did not say that the walnut shells work very well at all. Um, the one weird thing about buying tumbling machines is that Amazon starts recommending all these uh, other tools and things for reloading your own ammo. Um, so, you know, I, it took me a little bit to draw the correlation between what did I buy that Amazon thinks I, <laughs> I build my own bullets, but. How do you know how long? In the tumbler? That's a good question. What was it? How long do you know how to put them in the tumble for? I just put them in, uh, and I keep checking on them. them yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the tumbling. Um, this other one, this other finishing technique that I try. Yeah. I'll bring that over. Um, I was really looking forward to this this product, and I've had it on my shelf for probably six months or more. It's been a long time. Yeah. So this is uh, called XTC. Um, it's a brush-on coating for three D printed parts. Um, it looked really cool. Like it looked, it looks like magic. And I think their ad is like takes care of ninety percent of the post processing that you need to do. Yeah, eliminates 90% of post-finishing work. Um, and I, all it seemed to do to me was like make it glossy. Um, Steph really liked it. She thought it was cool. Um, I guess I'm harder to impress. Or, or... Well, I mean, it didn't, I don't know. It makes it shiny. 
Makes it shiny, yeah. It looks, <laughs> it looks finished <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. Does it seal it? I guess it's some sort of sealing. I mean, because it is definitely a th uh, there's a thick coating on it. Yeah, I I think it's more like a um, like an epoxy. Um, now you can paint on top of it, so it's kind of this mix of epoxy primer. Because um, it reminds me a lot of uh, some of the epoxy we've put on, um, like coasters, wood coasters, and things like that. So sort of that bar top finishing. Um, and you can apply multiple coats, too, but yes, exactly. It's, uh, it's all it's really the directions. It's exothermic, so it actually generates heat uh, once you mix the parts. Um, so they're like, you know, don't use this. Don't mix it in a styrofoam cup or a wax-covered cup. Um, Smooth out the I kind of way. thought that it would, but I don't think that it gets that hot. Okay. Yeah. Because um, even, I, I think there are still some like really rough areas in this. Um, you'll see it more, I guess, when, when we pass it around. But. What did you use to make those, the 3D prints? Hmm. The printer or the material? Oh, it's a uh, Tithi Tiki on Thingiverse. <laughs> Download. Download. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't design it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Sean found it. Do you know who it is that did it? I can find. Uh, servers. Servers. That would be like amazing if you were like. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me either. But is that stuff designed to be okay for PLA? Yes. ABS, A ABS and so PLA. I, I, I've seen yes, it is a reverse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's done like the TPT. Oh, that's fun. <clears throat> Oh, no. um, he only prints in acetone. Oh, sorry, in, in, a, in he ABS. Does and uses his, uh, uh, his own little acetone, like vapor bath that he's made that he uses indoors hmm. in this little place. And it works really well. He also prints them extremely light. Yeah. He can get like 80 or 90 prints out of his pool. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So, but then you end up looking glossy like that. Very different. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, acetone bath once. Yeah. Well, no, we didn't even do an acetone bath. We there's another chemical for PLA, and oh, it's that stuff is super dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was yeah. Not, it was not yeah. Good. Not good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not kid friendly. It's really good for dissolving organic for zero. like you. Yes. Yep. And that was with high schoolers. <laughs> yeah. So I do not. Uh, yeah. It's not something I do anymore. Our fun little army. Yeah, this is our octopus army. And for a while there, I was just printing these uh, to get like a, a pool of them ready. Um, a fleet. A fleet, yeah. <laughs> so this is hydrographics. Um, and this is one of the, the coolest things that I've discovered this year. Um, so the guys uh, at Le Fab Shop um, did this, I probably saw it a year ago. Um, and I just thought, well, that's really cool, but I can't imagine, um, you know, doing that myself. And so then Matter Hackers posted it on their blog recently again, and I was like, all right, I think I'm going to give this thing a shot. Um, now I know what I'm doing more. Um, and it's actually pretty easy, and it's really inexpensive. Um, so it's about $10 a roll for this stuff, and it, it just comes like wrapping paper, Christmas wrapping paper. It's a little smelly. Um, it's a little like uh, sticky-ish, but they come in so many different designs. Uh, so some of the ones that I tried were water, giraffe skin, snake skin, flames, wood grain, checkerboard pattern, and diamond plate. Um, I think that covers them all. Um, so I got it from dip123.com, 
Um, the most expensive thing is the activator spray, um, and you get 12 ounces of it. It's just like a can of spray. Um, and then I bought a, well, I guess I bought like seven different rolls of the film that, to give it a try. They also sell a primer um, that I recommend um, if you want to put it on before you, you do the dip. Um, I didn't do the primer on any of mine, and I'm pretty happy with the, the stuff that came out. I got better at it the longer it went, uh, or more I did it. We went through quite a few sheets trying to figure out which side is right side up. <laughs> Where we are, or a couple yeah. of sections, not like this. So um, this video is going up probably tomorrow. I'm going to show you the video because, uh, well, I made it. And <laughs> but uh, it walks through the process um, pretty well. I haven't muted. it. Um, so you basically just need like a tank. Uh, I used an old. Uh, not Tupperware, shoebox container. Shoe box container that we had laying down, um, a mask or a respirator for the spray paint, uh, the aerosol, <laughs> one rubber glove works, and then whatever uh, film activator you're going to use. The other tip that I'll share is to glue a little uh, piece on the bottom of your print that you can use to hold and dip. Um, I just found some like extra calibration cubes I had laying around. Um, there we go. You can see that there. Like really glued them on here, yeah, I use CA glue on. to glue them on, and it really stuck. In the yeah, they're spinners. <laughs> <laughs> they're tops. Yeah. So you'll put the film uh, glossy side down, and it does this weird thing. It needs to sit in the water for about two to three minutes. Um, and what will happen is it'll like kind of wrinkle and crinkle up, and then it'll smooth itself. Um, so you can see it like kind of becoming alive there. Um, and so you have to wait for this two to three minutes before you actually spray. You, you will see it happening. Um, and this is just me thinking around to make sure that it's um, getting the way it is. And you can see where it's kind of smoothed out right here. You spray it with the activator, just a real quick spray, and you have 10 seconds now to uh, dip your item. Um, and you just dip slowly, but I like to say with intent. Um, and it, it'll kind of cover it. And then I do this little twist to kind of break it off from the film. Um, and then it comes out really well. It just needs to dry overnight. It is really like sticky and wet. It is wet for a while. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, and people will, I mean, like if you want to impress people with your 3D print finishing technique, this is the way to do it. Because everybody that came into our office for a straight week was like, how are you getting it to do that? What kind of <laughs> is that? What are you doing? You know, it was just sort of mind blowing to them. We're like, not any of those things. Come to the Maker Ed meetup and find out. <laughs> <laughs> what is this technique usually used for? So it's used for vehicles, uh, <laughs> wheels on cars. Um, Motorcycle parts, things like that, any sort of uh, graphic that you want to put on metal, um, plastic, and it just yeah, uses I'm the. Sure, that there are lots of other things that it's used for too. I just can't think of them off the top of my head. I, a lot of times, in like um, it's decals yeah. um, for large vehicles and things like that. So that's a big bet. I guess so. Yeah, it's just a car wash. You just drive in, drive out. <laughs> Ten seconds to get in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Hot Wheels cars. Yeah. So that is it for us. Um, if you have something to share, uh, welcome to do it. Um, otherwise, we will just kind of do our little. Uh, you know. We want to do introductions. Yes, we'll do introductions and. Then we're gonna. Um, I have the hydrographics. We'll pull them out. I'll set up a bucket in the alley, and we'll we'll play with those. Um, we have all the paints. Um, like I said, my tumbler's not working, and you can't stay here for twelve hours anyway. Um, so.
Uh, but yeah, we'll do introductions real quick just to, to go around the room. Stephanie, you could start. I don't know why everybody knows me. You don't know that. <laughs> I guess you do. I, I kind of do. <laughs> Adam, you're up. What's new, Stephanie? Adam, uh, tech specialist, Overcommendation, uh, 